The Imo State Governor, Emeka Iheriwa, has threatened that he plans to move into the residence of the former governor, Rocha Sakoracha, with the citizens. Now, this was made known by the leader of the recovery of government stolen properties, Jasper Ndubaku, uh, in a continuation of recovery exercise in the state. Is this intention coming from the genuine need to recover stolen government properties or from a feud that has been existing between the governor and the former governor of the state, Rosh Hashanah I'm just wondering. Well, I, I have in the studio um, Obi Ajegbo. She is a legal practitioner. It's good to see you, Obi. All right, and uh, we still have Martin's Lumber, political analyst, here with us. Thank you, Martin's, for staying. Obi, I'll start with you because, you know, <laughs> this is uh, your constituency. But whether um, Iherio Ha, before becoming governor, was the, a deputy speaker of the National Assembly in the 8th Senate, I think. So, uh, the 7th seventh seventh. Uh, seventh Senate, mm. and he's been in the National Assembly for quite a while. One would expect, because there were, there were high hopes for him as governor in Imo State, hoping that he will come and right the wrongs in the state, but it looks like that's not the case. What do you think is fueling this recent action of his? I think the governor is just grandstanding. If he really and truly wants to uh, recover properties, there are processes. Mm -hmm. You look, if they have annexed the, gov the state government's uh, property to their personal name, you just revoke the CFO. If, if you want investigation, get EFCC, or you can set up your own private investigating body to investigate. So all this sending people, creating bad blood is not necessary. There are ways to do this thing. So I'm thinking he's just diverting from the actual, uh, he's just drawing people's attention away from the actual issue of governance, mm. which from my thing, I think he has a problem. I don't know. But why should you be turning the place into a circus when there are means of, of sorting things out? That's my take. First act of government was, we saw the statues, which has become some form of tourist you know, attraction in emo state <laughs> being brought down one after the other. And he said he had no idea that this was happening. And let's not forget that state funds were used Expended. to put these, to erect these things, whether we like it or not. So why should that be the first act? Where are the people who are advising <sighs> governors and leaders in instances like this? You know, Nigeria, we are just an interesting bunch. <laughs> Today, insecurity all over the place. You could also say that by the time we're pulling down toll gates, interstate toll gates, you know, free pass everywhere. At some point, somebody else came again and said, you know, we need to erect these toll gates mm -hmm. again. What kind of a joke is that? The last governor, Okorocha, was more or less a numero uno when it comes to drama. When it, come, or when it came to the issue of drama and all of that. So if he's been paid in his own coin, I don't really have issues with that. I know what I'm saying. Now, to the issue of Hated state funds. with his own coin? With, with no, by that I mean all of that this is drama, time. kind of drama thing. Is that not thing. time wasted? But just, just a minute, just a minute. You know, the issue of the statues, the governor said he had no hand or no foreknowledge of that. So we'll take him at that surface level. But to the core issue now that government property, you know, for some reason has found its way to the residence of the ex-governor, I want to believe that we must look at this thing with all of our sensibilities awake. Mm -hmm. Now, Ihedioha is a PDP governor. And the margin by which he won that state wasn't really fantastic. Now, you must know that the federal government is an APC government. The last governor was an APC governor. So to that extent, when you say you want to go by the book, you're likely going to meet maybe some brick wall. I'm just saying. So you're saying that he should break the rules? No, no, to I'm not saying amend that. <laughs> Citizens' power, as far as democracy is concerned, is the ultimate power. It is not one commander-in-chief. The biggest commander-in-chief, the citizens, they must own every process. And if they say, look, we employed you, maybe by our votes, by whatever, 
and this is what we want. You just have to toe the line. The truth is that for us in Nigeria, for too long, we have been relatively docile. We have not really taken any action. For some reason, we can't really bring all of our views together. Whether you say you're doing revolution now or you're doing revolution before or you're doing shakara, all of that usually translates to a waste of effort. So if someone is in government and he wants to trigger citizen power, for a genuine cause. It's not as if when you eventually get to the man's house and you go and jam toothpick, you now tell us that you have seen a crane. We won't accept that. But if you go there and the crane is there, for goodness sake, what are we talking about? Recently, there was a video that was, I think I saw it on social media, and there was this person who said, was, it was like a narrator, a very funny one, saying this house was the house that was, in most states money was used to build uh, by roaches and he gave it to his girlfriend. I saw that you know, video. I saw that video and I, was, and I was wondering, what is this about? So if we're having these kind of things, does it not make mockery of the <laughs> committee that has been put together to recover, like you said, their processes, why not do that and then come back to us with an information breakdown instead of what looks like a witch hunt? Look, in my view and in the view of a lot of people now, Governor Hedeha is a joke. That, that is a given. Because you are trying, and even um, gov, um, um, Senator Okorocha is even looking cleaner than he is. Because Senator Okorocha, Okorocha is now looking as a victim. And he is now saying, I haven't done anything. You haven't shown us anything. Fine, you went to warehouses, you saw government properties. Fine. But how did those things, were they sold to them? Were they auctioned? Because after four years, maybe they would, I don't know what the procedure is. Maybe after four years, they'll say, where you're going, you go with your properties and we'll buy another one. That could be that could be a given. But for God's sake, if you want to run a state, run a state properly. Don't turn everybody into touts. And the one at the warehouse, the, the video I saw at the warehouse, they almost ended up in fist cuffs. Why? So there are major problems in Imo State, as we all know. Infrastructure, breakdown, Just. projects that need to be put together. The biggest thing that uh, Owe is known for is hotels. big hotels. But the people in that state need more than hotels. Why can the president, the governor, not be facing the problems of the people and dealing with it while letting whoever it is or whatever committee deal with that issue? Now, we have how many months that, uh, into this administration? Do we see anything good coming from this administration because you know what they say in there's a nigerian palace that says the marriage that will be good you do from the bachelor's eve so we're in the bachelor's when you say, eve do you right see now. anything good from this government do you see Are this government to the Imo state government yes the Imo state government now a hundred can it days, change the lot hundred, of the you people you know normally if we are doing analysis, it's good to also do some kind of uh, compare and contrast kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, you, you must know that the background to this new development, so mm -hmm. to say, is that um, a government came with change, a promise of change. In 2015, we all saw how it played out. By that I mean that for six months, in fact, in uh, Oshun State, I must let you know that the governor then, who is now your Minister of uh, Internal Affairs, you know, for over a term, no cabinet. I mean, you cannot run. You must not run. You ought not to run a government like that. At the federal level, some other persons for like six months, nothing was happening. Today, we're talking about some kind of uh, judgment debt that we have to pay. But that aside, for the governor, after about 100 days or close to 100 days, um, well, given <laughs> comparatively, I would say that since he has just done about three months, he still has under three months of holiday. But seriously, I think that these issues need to be faced squarely. If government property is missing, for By goodness who? sake. Because like these I said, are, citizens this is a power, sitting governor and a, a former governor Having their brick, brick bats at the expense of the people. So who is going to do which is the why facing? which is why if they say that the citizens are going to go there, you know I said something. Don't forget uh, some big players in the world politics. They came and said 
Iraq had uh, nuclear armament or what have you, and they said they must go there and find out. The United States government, the United Kingdom government, they went there. They brought allied forces. They went to the place. At the end of the day, destroyed Iraq, nothing came out of it. But in this case, we're talking about citizen spy. If they go there, like I said, if someone says our crane is missing and we find it there, oh, lovely. But if you go there and all you can come out with is a toothpick, for goodness sake, we'll start uh, maybe impeachment proceedings. So there is no hard and fast rule about it. I, I think mean, it's a yeah. good development for there are There are times that governments come out with statements and say the people said... And the people are wondering, which of the people? Is it us? When did we have this meeting? When did they consult us? So in this case, when Iherio Ha is saying the citizens and he will be moving, I'm sure the citizens are wondering to themselves, did he consult us? Do we know about this? No, there are citizens. Are the people being carried along on this particular one? There are citizens. After all, the, that video we saw with the containers, we saw emo lights making noise. Those are the citizens. Those are the people. What I'm afraid of is let it not degenerate like what happened in ShopRite today, a state of anarchy, mm -hmm. rioting and looting and all those things. And that's where he has to be very careful. He shouldn't be seen as being somebody who is encouraging lawlessness in his mm -hmm. state. Because if not, they will, they will declare a state of emergency and he will be the loser. Hmm. Interesting. All right, so quickly, going forward, because it looks like we... We expect a lot from our, our leaders, especially when they come to us with these very lofty promises and um, ideas that on paper sound really good. But when they finally get into the office and they're supposed to get to working, we don't see anything. They and this excuses. is detail for everyone, whether it's the president, whether it's governors. And there's so many m issues that are mounting one on top of the other for every state. I said I was going to do, uh, well, I, I never really said I was going to do that. I only suggested. <laughs> we have that detail for the Apapa issue that it was going to be cleared in 60, 60 days. days. So where do we stand as citizens when it comes to holding our leaders responsible, especially to promises they make, marking those promises and holding them to account? Where do we stand? Are we capable of even holding these people to responsibility or accountability as they get into office and when they get ready to leave office? By design, democracy is a very beautiful concept. And the reason why it is that beautiful is because of one basic ingredient they call rule of law. Now, if you, if you like, bastardize the rule of law concept, then you're no longer running democracy. I'll give you a picture. I remember that um, at the Senate, when they were screening these uh, ministers, or rather the Chief Justice of Nigeria, and um, uh, Inaya Baribe asked a question that, in one judgment, the Supreme Court said that you must deal with the substance of every case. It's not about technicality. Eventually, when you become the Chief Justice of Nigeria, how are you going to look at that issue? to answer you, or rather to fast forward. Outside of that particular standard or precedence, the Supreme Court eventually brought a matter, decided a matter on some technicality, the Osho State Governorship election. You are bastardizing rule of law. Another thing, you say consistently a particular candidate or individual has been making a claim that today has become clearly false, clearly false, which ordinarily translates to contempt, translates to criminality, and for some reason you say that it is time bad. What kind of example are we setting for the younger generation? So the absence of rule of law in today's Nigeria <laughs> model of democracy is the reason why we are finding it so difficult to breed. We are all choking in this system. And until we have legal minds, judges that are strong enough, courageous enough, to look eyeball to eyeball and say, you know what, this law is no respecter of persons. That's the only time we'll get it right. Obi, this is a direct jab at you. Do you get to respond? Um, 
Well, the choice of um, <laughs> 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 the choice of CJN was um, highly controversial, mm. and a lot of people were against it. Mm -hmm. But the will of Mr. President had to come to bear. And you must understand that these judges are not from space. They are part of the Nigerian um, society. state society. Mm -hmm. And everything that you find in the Nigerian society will be reflected in them, but their own should be sealed off. Mm. So the judges are trying under the circumstances. She's, hmm. she's, she's speaking as a diplomatic yeah, well, person. What do you she's expect? trying to defend but, yeah, well, the she, she has spoken government. well. What do you say? <laughs> but we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. All right. And we, we need to change the narrative. And I think that the best way to start, for instance, again, you know, telling the in issue. In closing, because said, we uh, need yeah, to go. You know that in this country, we saw where uh, something happened. There was no law criminal, criminalizing that event. And for some reason, a decree was issued to kill those people. I'm not going to say exactly what it is, but I'm sure that most Nigerians are aware. That they will say it, it was it, military, it, it yes, military regime and what have you. Now the same advocate of that principle, we are now trying to find a way to guide him out of his own snare. It makes no sense. That's the way I see it. Well, we have to go. It's uh, been an interesting evening. I want to thank you, Martins Lomba, Obia Jigbo. Thank you very much for this Pleasure. conversation. Pleasure. Well, uh, we have to go for a break in, represent in response to the recent uh, xenophobic attacks in, uh, on Nigerians in South Africa. Nigerians have come out in their numbers to attack South African-owned businesses, especially uh, those in Nigeria. Now, our PLOS package today is a coalition of those shop videos showing the menace. We'll be right back. And when we come back, I'll be giving you my take. It's time for my take. It's very disheartening, it's very heartbreaking what is happening to Nigerians and every other African who is subjected to the pain of xenophobia in South Africa. And my guests in the studio today have said that the best way to address this is diplomatically and not reprisal attacks. But the question again is how long can we stand by and watch innocent lives and blood shed continuously happen in South Africa? And then diplomacies at play, yes, but can governments put their foot on the ground and deal with anybody who's trying to take life or property that is not theirs? Nobody has any life. The only life that you can lay claim to is yours. Taking lives of people, innocent people, because you think one person did a bad thing and has given those people a bad name, it's not a good reason. And so I urge the South African government, alongside the Nigerian government, to take decisive measures to put an end to this. It is worse for us as Nigerians because it seems like we're the most of the people who are being killed, we're most at the receiving end. A Nigerian 
uh, insurance boss was killed, strangled to death in her hotel room. That's still a pending case. Students are killed every single time in South Africa. It's still pending. None has been addressed. And now it is on a higher level. More and more people are killed and burned in, in broad daylight in South Africa. Is this the Africa that we're trying to showcase to the rest of the world? Recently, I was in Rwanda and we we're talking about speaking for Africa. This is how Africa intends to speak about itself, that we're killing ourselves. I'm sure the world will be looking at us as jokers. So let's think about it. The next time you pick up a machete and want to kill someone because you think the person is taking over your land, imagine what the West is thinking of you. And that's my message for today. And for Governor Ihed Yoha, who is fighting, I'm wondering, when are you going to get to governing and leading the people of Imo State instead of bickering? Yes, let the people who have the job of uh, checking what's been stolen or recovering property that has been misappropriated do their job. You are a governor now. Your job is to govern and lead the people out of the doldrums. And that's my take. I'm Mariana Kun. I'll see you tomorrow.